You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. What is Jonah doing? Jonah chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 In verse 4 our Jonah, who's busy fleeing from the presence of the Lord, went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. In English he then pays his fare, which makes good sense. It's interesting, in Hebrew he doesn't pay his fare, he pays her fare. So who she did Jonah have a travelling companion? And no, the only she around is the ship. Onia, the word for a ship, is feminine. So Jonah pays for fare, pays the fare that the ship demands, presumably, goes on board, and goes with them to put to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. In verse four we get two more of those bigs. The Lord hurls a big wind on the sea, and there was a big tempest in the sea. And when you get a big wind and a big tempest, well, you get trouble. And the ship threatens to break up. And threatens to break up is not actually a bad translation. Strange though it sounds. The Hebrew is actually closer to the ship thought or planned to break up. But either way, this ship is getting thoroughly personalized. First Jonah pays her fare, the ship's fare, and then the ship threatens or plans to break up when the Lord hurls a big wind which causes a big storm. There are some clues that the book of Jonah is something a bit more than just a straightforward tale. Everything is big. And if ships could talk, what a tale this one would tell. You see, the story is already starting to turn funny. At this point, the sailors get afraid. Well, they would, with the ship planning to break up under them, and a big wind causing a big storm. So each of them cries to his god. Now, however small this ship was, that must have been an awful lot of gods getting involved in the story at this point. So there they are, each of them crying to their god. And presumably while they're doing it, they're busy chucking the cargo overboard to make the ship lighter. Where's Jonah while all this is going on? Well, Jonah's been continuing his descent. A while back he was going down to Joppa. Now he's gone down to the hold of the hold of the ship and laid himself down there in the deepest, darkest parts of the ship. Your translation won't have the deepest, darkest parts, but the word that's used in Hebrew, Yarkate is the word that's used for the mountain on which Baal, the Phoenician or Canaanite god, lives in the furthest parts of the north. It's not just the western god Santa who lives at the North Pole. Well, no, Baal doesn't live at the North Pole. But he lives at Mount Saphon. Yarkate Saphon. Distant north. Pretty much the North Pole. That's where Jonah's gone. Down into Yakate of the sh of the ship. And he's fast asleep. Big wind, big storm, ship complaining and threatening to break up, sailors running around calling to their gods and throwing everything they can find overboard, and Jonah is fast, blissfully asleep. Not for the first time in these five verses, we have to be asking ourselves, what on earth is going on here? Maybe by the time we get to the end of the book we'll have worked out an answer. See you next time.